What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here, and uh, today I'm gonna be going over a video on the dip and rip setup. Uh, this is probably one of the most popular, one of the most talked about setups in the long trading world, and I'm just gonna be going over some examples of stuff I look for so you can apply it to the market. And uh, once again, I'm not a fi I'm not a licensed financial advisor, so even if this does sound like investment advice, it's not. It's just all for educational and uh, entertainment purposes. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, so a little background on the setup. I know I've mentioned this already before, but this is probably one of the most talked about long setups in the trading world. I didn't really fully understand why this setup to, setup worked. A lot of the kind of mechanisms and components to it, I didn't really understand until I met Bao. It's actually very simple if you don't overcomplicate it. And the reason why I'm making this video, it's almost like a first bounce part four, because it kind of gives you an idea of when to take a quick first bounce trade and when you can be a little bit more patient on these types of trades. And uh, I think this will clear up kind of a lot of confusion that's been going on with it. So basically the dip and rip, it's similar to first bounce. It's always between 9.30 and 10.30. So with the, uh, with the first bounce, the first bounce doesn't really have a, a set time frame. So you can, you can catch a first bounce in, in the pre-market, you can catch a first bounce after the market opens, sometimes there's some in the afternoon, sometimes there's some in the morning. So the first bounce doesn't really have a time frame, but this one is always gonna be between 9.30 and 10.30. This one kinda has more of a grindy feel to it, and we'll get into that in some of the examples. It's a lot, it's a lot slower than the first bounce, so when you have a first bounce trade, you kinda get that quick spike, and then we're trying to uh, make money off of that kind of quick pullback as if a ball was kind of bouncing on the ground We're trying to make money on that first kind of pop up, but in this one. It's kind of more of a slow grindy uh, Feel towards the support line. We're using pre-market support uh, Always as our as our line. This is supposed to say our line, but it says out for some reason But we're using pre-market support as our line We can use line charts and candlestick charts and I actually show examples of the candlestick and the line charts And it's as I mentioned a little slower paced than the first bounce The first bounce is kind of like a quick this one you can be a little bit more more patient on But as always you always need risk management in all of your trades uh, So as far as criteria goes I don't necessarily have a set criteria every day. And I know I've talked about this in a couple of my other videos where I don't I don't say like, well, if it's 11 mil and my criteria is, you know, under 10 mil, I'm not going to trade it. Uh, I'm a little bit more uh, kind of, I'm just going to trade the hot chick. And as long as it's not a 100 mil float, we're okay. So it's the hot chick of the day. We As long as we're getting some like kind of high consistent volume, I really like that. And uh, yeah. The lower floats always work best with, with any of these setups. The lower floats are always gonna work best if you're a long trader. And that's just kind of how it works with float rotation and uh, supply and demand. But you know, it's not really a, a spot on criteria where if it's not under a certain amount, uh, you know, we're, we're not gonna trade it because that's not uh, what I kind of do. Um, so anyway, this is kind of like comparing the first bounce and what I call kind of like the dip and rip. I know that the the dip and rip, like this type of setup is probably going to always still be referred to as the first bounce, but it's more so kind of like a, a more, uh, it's a patient first bounce compared to these where we get this parabolic move and then we're just making money off this sort of niche. In this, we're, we are kind of making money off the, the pre-market support, and uh, that's pretty much what this setup is. It's You can be a little bit more patient. You can kind of draw your line at pre-market. Uh, you can go grab a coffee, and then by the time the market opens, you can just wait for those lines to kind of hit. But instead, with this one, this this is kind of like a quick move up, and then we're making money off the 
the move down, and then uh, this little bounce right here, as I've talked about in some of my prior videos. If you haven't watched the prior videos, uh, I have a per first bounce part one, part two, and part three out, and this is almost like a part four, but I would advise you to watch uh, one, two, and three uh, before you kind of start trying to learn uh, this setup. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is SES. Um, what I did basically is I took on my computer, I have different file folders for examples of different types of setups. So like the VWAP bounce video that I made, I have tracked that uh, setup kind of extensively. And um, the other kind of setups that I trade, like first bounce, I always take screenshots of them when they come and save them in case there's like a time like this where uh, I'm like, hey, check out this SES trade that I made. Just so I, I have all my trades categorized and I have all my trades kind of right there in front of me. So if I need to pull an example, I can pull it right away rather than, you know, spending 30 minutes trying to look for the type of setup. So anyway, uh, this one with SES, it's a kind of a good first example to start with because we notice in the pre-market we have this, this nice pre-market move where it just... It, it just kind of flows all the way up. We notice that this support right here, this kind of support line on the way down, the chart likes to, con the lines like to conform to the chart. So we know that already. And then we kind of get this move up, the market opens and we kind of get a little tank here. And then, and then we get this nice pop up here. And what I like about this chart so much is that it has already kind of broken this support line. So the next one is kind of like this three, 320 area. And that's where you can kind of look to find some support here. And then after that, we kind of get this nice pop. And we notice that there's there's kind of some constant volume always happening. So the volume isn't isn't like inconsistent like it is over here where there's like not a lot of volume left. This is always doing some volume. So I really like that. I love when the stock doesn't feel dead. This stock isn't a broken stock. So we kind of get this move again, and then we get this little area of support here, this area of support holds, and it ends up coming up like this. And if you look at this on a candlestick chart, you can ignore these trades. These are kind of like, sometimes I'll do pre-market trades in the morning with like a little smaller size, just to kind of get a feel of the stock and and kind of feel how the stock is trading. So we, we kind of notice this area of support right here. We know that there's an area of support right here. We know that there's kind of an area of support down here. So we get this is open and we kind of get this fade and it kind of pops off this kind of 320 area once and then it, it used the uh, this kind of support line and ended up coming off it and this was probably ended up being like a chat pump or a bunch of shorts ended up getting squeezed who were who were trapped down here but basically there's a couple things to note about this type of trade uh, number one is that I wasn't chasing in in, in up here trying to be a hero trying to get a big squeeze I was very patient and waited for my kind of lines in around here number two is that we notice the volume is pretty consistent down here uh, we get these uh, 150k bars all the time up here it's more upwards of you know 400k all the time so we know that there's a lot of volume being done and that's something that's important to note because let's say that this volume had it dropped off way way off to like you know less than 100k in a volume bar or 60k or even 50k I probably would have just started ignoring the stock and I probably would have cut a loss on here but this is a type of trade where I can I know that I can be a little bit more patient on because I I noticed that the line is kind of holding a little bit longer and that's it like this type of move is is not something that you're going to see every day but although recently we have been seeing a lot more it's something that I just kind of I just kind of pay attention to and it's something that I'll draw my lines and say to myself, okay, this kind of looks like a dip and rip setup coming in. Um, let's try this line out and I'll just risk underneath three. And if this, this gets broken here, I'm just going to cut for a loss and that's it. And that's pretty much my trade idea on this one and ended up working out. These types of trades are just so I can, uh, just so I'm kind of sitting in my seat watching the price action and I kind of get a they're almost like warm up trades. So it's not like I'm looking to like bank big or I'm looking to, to be a hero or I'm saying, oh man, oh man, like crazy. These trades are more so like warm up trades just so I have a little bit of skin in the game early. Um, it's not really a FOMO trade. I don't do this all the time, but when we have a setup come around like SES, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and look to just get a kind of a read for it early. Number one, you're never going to always be perfect. And number two, these stocks are just vehicles for your money to grow. They're just vehicles for, for your money to get to point A to point B. So if you start out with, let's say, $100, then, and your goal is to make $120, well, if you've made 
$120, that was your goal in the beginning, and this stock was just a trading vehicle to get your $100 to $120. And I think that's probably the most important part is that you're going to see charts like this where I show the best the best setups and the, the, the best kind of ideas of the year and kind of I'm just trying to, to showcase the absolute best trades with the setup. But I also think that it's very important that you uh, realize that presetting your cells on a daily basis can help you catch a lot of the be green consistently rather than trying to hold for something like this and have it not come. I'll be back next week with a new one. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.